Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today watching all these red candles, and you're probably wondering why the hell I'm so happy about it. Well, I'll tell you, it's not necessarily that I'm happy about everything going down. Honestly, like, I would very much rather have green candles going up to the moon, through the sky, running out of oxygen, just happy as a clam. But at the same time, there's one thing I would have probably not necessarily more so than that but ahead of that and that is exactly what we're seeing right now so why would i want a whole mess of big old red candles over here looking like the state of florida before wanting it to go straight up to the moon well because let's face it, it, it you know they say yeah it's easy to make money in a bull market but the real generational wealth is made in the bear market so long as you have the uh, discernment to see what's going on and you don't panic you don't get frustrated you don't just say oh my gosh we dipped all the way down here we're at below 22k right now that i'm done packing it in i'm not going to pay attention i'll wait until uh i start seeing news articles when bitcoin's back up at 60k or something before i get back in now, that is the worst thing you could do literally the worst thing you could do you might as well just t take whatever bitcoin or all coins that you have right now and just like drop them on a cold wallet never come back because you're just going to be making bad decisions so now is actually the best time to pay attention i know you know when everything's going up everybody always wants to check their wallet check their portfolio see what see what it's up to today oh heck yeah it's, it's up another five hundred thousand dollars today sweet but all that's good and nice but at the same time, if those are your long-term holdings, who cares? <clears throat> you know what? Why are you checking it anyways? Uh, just to make yourself feel better because you see some nice numbers on an app on your phone or something. You know, it, it doesn't matter till you go to sell it. If you're not trying to sell it anytime soon, then it, well, why are you bothering to look at it? You should be waiting until Bitcoin's at you know, 100K, 200K, whatever the heck K. Um, but for the moment, just looking, you can see where we're dipping down now. I kind of put the title of the video as you know i've been right and i'm normally not one to go and toot my horn or anything like that but if you've been watching any of the videos that i've been making for like the last two weeks i've been talking about like yeah despite the fact that you know we had some chances or opportunities to see you know a bounce off to the upside you know once we were consolidating for a while that's a wrap you're generally not seeing this long of a consolidation to the upside let me state that to be clear this long of a consolidation to the upside without seeing the equal but opposite so you have down and then technically this was our up and now we have our down and the question then becomes are we done going down but it, it seems like we may have a little bit of a bounce for the moment I haven't really actually even looked at the chart very much to even see what I think is going to happen. Where do I think it's going to go? Anything like that. So I'm about to do it right now on the video because why not? Uh, but, you know, we've been watching this golden pocket area right here for a little while now. I've said more times than I care to remember that this big golden pocket is the big one for the entire bull market. So very, very, very important. We also had this spider line right here that generally speaking gave us some support back here now if you have said spider lines on your chart you would have noticed that we were playing around it for a little while there you know we came down had some support there for a little bit came back up even started pushing <clears throat> toward the top of the golden pocket but didn't quite make it, got rejected. And we did take a little pause right here. And I remember watching, I just happened to be looking at the uh, computer at that moment. And I was watching, I'm like, okay, it's taking a little break. You know, there was a potential that maybe we had uh, some higher lows going on. But seeing what all was going on, where we just kind of had this little sideways action right here, just, you know, shrinking down, wasn't looking too good. Ended up being more right than I even imagined. Because from there, it was just, you know, down. I, I didn't even bother seeing support and resistance around this level, but 
you know, after seeing this bounce and the DBSI numbers we were getting on these green candles, <clears throat> had no faith in it whatsoever. And then as soon as we started coming down, we started getting one, two, three, four yellow X's. It's been a little while since we mentioned it, but the, uh, the four yellow X strategy that comes up from time to time. Well, we definitely saw that there, didn't we? You know, again, caught a little blood diamond right there, you know, right on the bounce back. So it now it doesn't guarantee that you're going to come down from there, but it definitely signals that is a strong possibility. You know, I've seen times where you come like this, take a little bit down take a little dip down, catch another blood diamond, but then end up getting enough bullish pressure to kind of negate that. But looking where we're at at the moment, so we did have ourselves a wee little bounce. Now, this blue line right here, I don't know why it's getting cut off short. It's kind of weird. Maybe it's because I'm on such a low time frame. That is the 200 week moving average. You know, if you watch uh, practically anybody really, uh, like Evan Aldo or who well, else talk about that? Uh, Benjamin Cohen, I'm sure he's been talking about it. That 200 week moving average is kind of like the, the the big line in the sand, so to speak, that everybody's been hoping and relying on to potentially get a bounce off of it back up to the upside because, let's take a little trip back in time. Yeah, that's not gonna be enough. We're gonna have to hit the weekly. Give you a little perspective on the spider lines here. I drew a couple more. Matter of fact, all these red ones were new. I drew this first one when we started heading down just to get an idea of where potentially we may see some uh, resistance, possibly stoppage, but ended up uh, these two close together. I got to delete one of them. I forget which one's which. Now that we're on the weekly, I'll probably check it out. But if you don't know, had a video about how to draw spider lines. As you can see right here, this is where you will be doing the drawing. You're basically going from candle bodies over here to the highest point you know of this peak right here of that swing high going to the top of the candle body on that guy right there on the weekly chart let me reiterate that and you're going to want to extend the lines to the right you could do whatever style you want to do whatever uh it, it, things tend to get a little cluttered up here, so I like doing the dotted lines because it just kind of fades in the background a little bit. I've made these ones bigger. As you can see, I usually leave them like one pixel. I made these ones a little bigger just for the videos lately, so it's a little bit more visible to people watching on phones and things like that. But the red ones, just added those guys. As you can see, we already came up to this peak now, so I'm hoping to not have to draw any more. But... I also threw this little support resistance line in here that I don't even remember what it is anymore. But you can see the blue line over here is kind of the point of zooming out. The blue line over here is the 200 week moving average. Now, if we were to zoom out, you see, obviously, I mentioned this before, Black Swan event with the COVID dip pushed down a little bit below it, but it never closed below it on the weekly. We actually closed right just barely above it on the way back up. And Heikenashi Candle is not getting into, you know, the finer points of that. If you want to know about it, I actually made a video recently about Heikenashi Candles, how they work, why I use them, all that good stuff. But you can see right here at the last bear market bottom, we took a strong bounce off the 200 week simple moving average to be clear and this chart really doesn't do it justice but if you go back it, you get the same situation going all the way back so historically it has been like the uh, the true blue bear market support band if you will <laughs> Which, speaking of, since we're already over here. Our 
our bull market support band quite a distance away. Not really any point in uh, bringing it up, but you know, if this is going to be the hopeful lower bound, this is going to be the upper bound that we will hopefully try to break. But that's not going to happen for a little while. Sorry, I'm getting rid of that. This guy right here. Let's see if I can remember what the hell that is. It is also a 200 moving average. I don't know. It's clearly not a simple moving average because it didn't come out the same. So maybe it's an EMA. I'll have to brush up on that one. Very well likely could be an EMA. Which we did see some support off of that prior before we broke through it. But looking down here, let's get we'll get to the important part. As you can see on Marcus Cypher B on the weekly, I'm really not trying to tell that nursery rhymish, but big first thing that jumps out that you should be paying attention to is the money flow is still coming down in the red. So everything else damn near irrelevant at that point, but we can get some extra information as well as we look at it and you can see the VWAP. Took a bounce off the zero line and we are heading down. So. A little bit of a disappointment for anybody who was hoping that, you know, the VWAP would push through and come back to the upside and at least get some kind of little relief rally. Looks like it's not going to be the case. And uh, the main reason that I've been saying that's likely to happen is these two lines right here, which are the RSIs. And they are both pointed down and they are also getting closer together which means it is gaining strength as it goes down which if uh if you're a permable uh, yeah you're not gonna like that now come down to the daily kind of an interesting situation similar here with the rsis except much closer together and potentially meeting up within the next couple days i mean it can pretty much happen at any time right now. VWAP, you know, curving back up, but still deep below the zero line. What is this random little scratch right there? On the money flow, you know, we were coming back up, and now we're kind of angling down. At this point, the thing I would be looking for is that you know, we maintain some kind of trend with higher lows on that money flow. That's not going to guarantee that it starts coming back up just yet, but it would be less bad, if you will. Not to mention, we'd also want to start seeing a bullish divergence on the daily. I mean, that's like everybody's hopes and dreams on that one. I mean, you start seeing bullish divergence on the daily chart, you don't ignore it. So, you know, I'll be paying attention to that. If we start seeing it, I will absolutely point it out. You know, another thing just to kind of notice that had a wicked downtrend right here on the VWAP. Again, those don't last forever, but sometimes they do get stretched out. I mean, the length on this guy was atrocious. Didn't do much for us. I mean, we had a little bit of up. More down than up, though. Uh, six hour. This is one that I was looking at earlier. Money flow is really bad looking. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's not down here yet, maybe, but I mean, that's a pretty steep angle right there. We'll see what comes of that. We do have a little bit of uh, VWAP divergence going on, but you know, if you remember from any of the videos that are talking about like order of operations precedent, you know, what is more important than uh, other indications, the money flow is more important than seeing some VWAP divergence. You know, it, generally speaking, even with the bad money flow, if you're getting some uh, VWAP divergence, you know, you see maybe a little bit of pullback. But when things start going into free fall, okay, maybe not free fall, but ah, crap. You know, maybe not free fall, but when things really start dipping, 
it, it tends to it's just gonna do what it's gonna do regardless of whatever it says not to say none of this means anything just just let, keep it in mind you know it, because like uh you know you start seeing some small bullish divergences over here on the lower charts and just idgaf it was going down anyways you know maybe it took a little pit stop for a minute but that was about the most you could get out of it you know you could pull a little scalp long if you were super hungry but which reminds me on the dbsi up here we have 16 16 12 i can't see what this prior one was 20 21 so uh, yeah it's just it's been pushing right now it's putting out sustainment numbers although it is a little lower going from 16 to 12 we'll see you know we'd like to see a lower number than that if we were expecting to get some bullish action coming back on the bottom side though you know negative five negative four negative three two so you know we did jump into the positive numbers although it is not very much just yet but it is the six hours so it's going to take a little while to do anything over here on the four hour this was something I was really paying attention to see if it was going to play out like I was thinking because we had this RSI's coming together, probably mentioned it in the video, and we started along the bottom here. And I was wondering like, okay, are we just going to ride the bottom for a while because this money flow really didn't show much signs of uh, coming back up. You know, kind of bearish everywhere you looked. And sure enough, yes, I mean, we are just kind of skipping off the waves down here like a jet ski now an interesting tidbit just to point out i'd be looking for another little v shape like this but lower down closer to the zero line and when we start to see something like that i'll point it out and tell you why i have mentioned it in older uh videos i think the video about rsis just specifically I may have mentioned it, but, you know, looking at, at everything else, again, you know, a little bit of a VWAP divergence, which, you know, we, we've caught a couple little pit stops so far, so we'll, we'll see what happens if that can turn into anything. We are above the zero line now. Yeah, you know, obviously not any momentum divergence as of yet. Went deep down into the, the little band down there. And on the one hour so this is kind of what i was talking about a little bit with uh you know even though sometimes you may get a wee bit of divergence again you know precedence order of operations the money flow is gonna kick everything else in the pants and tell it to do whatever it wants it to do the money flow is a big bully so even though you know we technically saw bullish divergence right there that's about all we got you know once again even at the time even though we saw bullish divergence right there didn't care money flow still going down generally speaking momentum going down you know at that point we we're already looking pretty bearish and then we get our big uh, yellow manipulation x's popping in there now on the plus side you know so far momentum has slowly been kind of increasing back up like it's not pushing quite as far down so it's you know something to maybe hang your hopes on just a tiny bit oh music ran out let's see what this is about lo-fi hip-hop i don't think i've ever listened to it Let's see. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think how this music is here. But coming down to the 30 minute. And this is why uh, I also was trying to reiterate about, you know, seeing some bullish divergence on the momentum at a time when money flow is just trying to dig its way through the floor. Isn't always necessarily going to get you what you think it will 
which is why some you know there's other things to pay attention to as well which is like if you start seeing you know those big knives to the bottom those precipitous drops and you see money flow starting to come back up a little bit maybe you catch uh you know a, a bigger distance on those momentums a little uh you know, maybe a little trigger wave coming in there that's some um, uh, complementing indications that you may want to watch out for otherwise man for the 30 minute i mean just look at it just rsi just, just bouncing down off the bottom of course you know as the money flow reaches down to the 60 line but at the moment, let's see. Now we're, we're having a little bounce right now, but it's looking very similar. Not exactly similar, but fairly similar. A little bit better than our previous little bounce. You know, we're catching the high 20s at the bottom. A little doji star right there, but might have a little uh, might have a little gas in the tank. We'll see what happens. Keep in mind, Heikinashi's, so, you know, we've already kind of come back down a little bit. Also, I'll point out, as soon as we start going up, pretty much every time, start hitting that weakness, as those RSI start splitting. And we'll end this on the 15 minute. What do we got here? A little pullback, potentially keep going here. You know, money flow looking a little better over here on the 15. I mean, it is a, a lower time frame, but that may be a little encouraging just because, you know, we were getting weakness up here, started to pull back. If this can start going up, RSI is coming together. That could be a sign we have a little bit more relief rally than uh, it seems. I guess that is what it seems like, but so that's what's going on with that. Look at all those big green dots. You know, let's see. Hopefully, we could put something together a little, a little more than this guy. Just out of curiosity here. What do we come up with? this leg right here alone 26 percent ouch look at all those yellow x's damn one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve yellow x's hey four sets of four sorry three sets of four ah it's getting a little late but on that note, you know, I just wanted to take a little look just to recap if you want over here on the higher time frames. If you take a look, you know, before everybody starts convincing you that, hey, this is the bottom and it's over. We're good. Moving on. Um, doesn't have to be the case. I mean, for starters, look at that big, you know, money flow wave, that block right there. Look where we're at right now. It barely even started. So there's nothing to say that, you know, this is the end of it. And generally speaking, you can see just looking back, you know, how big the waves generally are and how long they last. And I mean, and even the, the green wave leading up to this, you know, because you can generally start the downtrend from the high point on the green wave coming down i mean there was barely anything here there's no bullish strength so keep that in mind uh you know as far as you know buying trying to get a good price I, I am not discouraging you i've literally been on the fence for the last few hours of whether i want a dollar cost average at this point it's not it's not a bad place to do it you know, not financial advice. I would just say that uh, there is a very real 
possibility, maybe even an expectation that, you know, we see maybe a little bit of bouncing on the RSI right here, money flow con continuing, you know, until we get to that lower peak. You know, the momentum here, which is kind of interesting, already so low. But keep in mind, I mean, this momentum can start coming up while the price goes down. Obviously, it's going to be a little more sketchy, but. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're trying to find a spot to buy in, I would just recommend, you know, maybe not going all in at once. You know, do the dollar cost average. That way, if it goes down further, you still got money left. You can you could bring your average purchase price lower, you know, rather than being stuck 100% up here. Maybe it comes down here. You say, oh, okay, so, you know, now your average purchase price is lower. And at the same time, I know there's uh, stirrings and rumblings in the community about it potentially going down to insanely low numbers. I don't know. At that point, it's uncharted territory. You know, you can never say never, but at the same time, you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And the way everything's going with the economy right now and yeah just not even going to get too far into that because i just get frustrated just remember prepare for the worst because it can absolutely get worse and one thing i want to mention about that is when you look at the news or you know websites or whatever it might be you notice that at this point all the major players are talking about potential recession you know when bank of america jp morgan goldman sachs people from the fed when all of these people are talking about it at that point that means they have looked into it come to the conclusion denied it for a little while finally acquiesced and now they've reached a point of acceptance and then they might be willing to publicly say it because anytime they say something like that that hurts overall sentiment and it's going to make less money for them so for all of these people to be talking about it right now no, no matter how much they couch their language a little bit um yeah that that yeah, makes me think uh we're probably already on track to go through that and i think the last person to admit it will likely be biden and his administration at least officially and i think at that point by the time he actually admits it and says okay you know maybe uh, by then we'll probably be in a recession or something and if he says like okay you know yes uh, we are in a recession and we're doing this and this and this and it's going to be okay I mean, by the time they're talking that stuff i mean you should already have been preparing to some degree but at that point, I think the, the the people who don't pay any attention whatsoever, the normies, the people who just have nothing to do with finance or at all, you know, they may start acting differently. And so we'll see what that happens. We'll see what happens with that, you know, with all the the shortages and supply chain stuff. You know, that's not gonna help matters. But remember, you know, make sure you got food and just you no, know, now they're talking about blackouts because they keep shutting down the effing power grid. So, you know, make sure you got enough, especially non-perishables. If, you know, this heat wave keeps going and gets worse, anything like that, and they don't have enough electricity to keep people on, it's not going to be fun. So keep that in mind. And if you get too hot, remember, you know, you can always put some ice in a bucket, put it in front of a fan, put like a... I don't know, a towel or a hood type thing over it just to try to make sure you keep all that cold air getting sucked into the fan. You got yourself a little bit of a, you know, redneck uh, air conditioning. So for more tips, come back next week. All right, no, I'm out. Remember, it's not the end of the world. And even though some people may want to watch the world burn, me, I just want to get the sale price. You know, I'm trying to get it for the low. And if that's your mentality, then you're not too worried about what's going on right now. At least, you know, on the charts. Hey, and if you're 
generally speaking, prepared, then uh, maybe you're not so worried about what's going on elsewhere either. So, food for thought. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day, week, whenever I see you next.